Thank you.
a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. holy baptism, Elizabeth Liz Hazen was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in this life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Congregation, please be seated for the end.
Lord be with you. And also with you. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Liz and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful and unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. For a little while, when the coming one will come, and it will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. We continue with the verse, I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and I am the rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does, who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. <clears throat> to him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, <clears throat> for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow. But they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. <coughs> the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have my life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. We <coughs> together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. 
Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God chosen for our meditation and comfort this day is based upon Liz's confirmation text recorded in the letter to the Hebrews, the 10th, 10th chapter, verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So far, our text. In the name of Jesus, amen. It is not at all beyond the realm of possibility that on the day of Liz's examination before the congregation of our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Curtis, Nebraska. She heard her pastor read these words from a book like this. Dearly beloved, holy baptism is the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which God shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ. The being justified by His grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Through this sacrament, God receives little children into his covenant and kingdom of grace, working faith in them and making them members of Christ's church and temples of his Holy Spirit. And as God will not suffer his faithfulness to fail, but keep his covenant and mercy, even so, he says to each of his own, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. To the end, however, that this purpose of God may be accomplished, and the children may grow in grace and Christian knowledge as they advance in years, the Lord gave commandment, saying to the parents, through the Apostle Paul, Bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and to the church, even as to Simon Peter, feed my lambs. God will not suffer his faithfulness to fail, but keep his covenant and mercy. Even so, he says to his own, be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee the crown of life. But yet we are daily and frequently in this life in which we live, tempted by the devil at <coughs> such times as this in our lives. When we lose those who are dear to <coughs> us, those we love. To call into question faithfulness of God. It is as almost though the serpent is there with his tongue in our ears, slithering it back and forth and tickling our ears and putting these thoughts into our head like, did God really say that he would be faithful? Does it look like God was faithful? Moses' parents, your grandparents, heeded these words of St. Paul, who says, Do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Something parents rarely do today. A few verses later, in the very same chapter, St. Paul writes of being equipped and putting on the full armor of God. Armor which included taking the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And to put on the helmet of salvation and take up in the hand the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The devil's lies and deceptive tactics do not end when we are baptized into Christ and made children of God. 
That assault began on March 17, 1925, with this. See, from the moment that the Christian receives the mark upon the forehead and upon the heart, marking them as one redeemed by Christ the crucified, the devil takes aim. That's his bullseye. He is going to do all that he can to rip that person away from the faith. The devil has to waste no time with those who are not baptized because they don't belong to Christ. He does not waste time going after those who shun God's word. Instead, he goes into a full-out attack upon those who place their full faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their defender, their deliverer, their advocate, their savior. It should be of no surprise then that we as God's people continually pray, O Lord, preserve our faith. That we never fall from you, and at last grant us everlasting life that you have prepared for us. This is confirmation verse was God's word for her to take with her throughout life. They were just those words which gave her confidence and hope. They, they weren't just mere words written down on a certificate to be tucked away. They were to be part of her life. Taken with her to her earthly pilgrimage, which God obviously so dearly blessed time and time again. So let us hear those words again. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith, the confession of our hope without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Look, look back over the life of Liz and the self-examination of our own lives this day. It exposes just how easy it is to let go of instead of holding fast to the profession of our faith in Jesus Christ. We, like Liz, like to think that once we know Christ, that is sufficient to follow Him, that we need not to come and be part of the fellowship the body of Christ. But yet, as we heard in the letters of Hebrews, do not neglect gathering together as is the habit of some, but do so all the more as we see the day approaching. We don't always see that need to be burdened with the armor of God in this life. We believe that we can lighten that load, shed the armor, and somehow make it through life. Running freely after the pleasures and cares of life, and finding peace and contentment in these things. I often share with our confirmation kids, would we send our military personnel into battle with shorts and sneakers? The obvious question is, no, that would be silly. We send them in fully prepared, armed, with the latest and the greatest, so as to combat the enemy. The Christian life is no different. We are given the armor of God. Armor that Liz was equipped with in this life. Do not believe for one moment that we can get through life without that armor. This is a lie, a trick, and a deception of the devil. Those of you that are familiar with the liturgical calendar of the year, this past Sunday, the first Sunday in Lent, 
The gospel text traditionally appointed for that day is the temptation of Jesus. Where the devil goes square on at Jesus and questions if he is the Son of God to turn the bread, to turn the stone into bread, to throw himself down from the pinnacle of the temple or to bow, bow down and worship him and all that glory will be his. How does Jesus respond? God's word. <coughs> it is the same word of God which we use, which Liz used throughout her life to combat the assaults and the attacks of the devil. For she knew that Jesus came to be her savior, to do battle for the one against the one who was attacking her. She knew that Jesus would crush his head and free those who were once held fast in the shackles of sin and death and give them release. During the season of Lent, we as followers of Christ are led to a life of repentance and renewal. To cast aside and repent of our sin that would have separated us forever from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We need to have that confidence, that unwavering faith which claims to Christ the crucified. For that is the confession of our hope that endures to eternal life. Our lives and our actions, our denial of Christ, as our Savior exposes how faithless we are to God's love and mercy that He so freely shows to us over and over again. But thanks be to God, though, as St. Paul reminded Timothy, that if we are faithless, God remains faithful, for He cannot deny Himself. <coughs> As Christians, we have hope that an unbelieving, deceived world turns its nose up against the scoffs and mocks. <clears throat> they don't leave in a living hope. And yet, we read in the first letter of St. Peter, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of, our, of Jesus Christ from the dead. God's faithfulness to his dear Liz extends far beyond what we could even attempt to come close to in this life. He was waiting <coughs> to welcome her back here into the fellowship of this congregation, something she so dearly was blessed to be a part of. Before the service, I walked back there and I looked on the day that she was received into fellowship here, January 2011. I made a comment to mine how those years have gone by in a hurry. But yet, even when Liz wasn't always faithful, God never cast her aside. He didn't move on and look for somebody else who waited patiently for her. He drew her back to himself through his word and sacraments. These are changeless things, but changeless Christ. We need only to listen and to believe in the same promise which lived, believed in with a simple faith. <coughs> she believed in the forgiveness of her sins, eternal life, salvation, which were hers through her Lord Jesus Christ. God in Christ has promised 
to redeem us, to settle our debt of sin, just as he made that same promise to Liz. He willingly comes to die and suffer for you in order to give you his life. He takes upon himself the filth and stain of your sin in exchange for his righteousness. To give freedom to those once held in bondage by the devil. This freedom, this release, is what God wants for each one of you here today. I will give them a heart to know that I am the Lord, says the prophet. <coughs> and they shall be my people and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. This, dear friends, is the living God who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. <laughs> to listen to Him. To remove the scales from our blind eyes so that we may see the God who loves us so much that He was willing to send His Son to suffer, to die, to rise again so that we may be justified before our Father in Heaven. He came to save lives. <clears throat> Who is a God like you? Says the prophet Micah, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression for the remnants of his inheritance. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love. I would encourage each one of you here this morning as did Liz's pastor once on the day of her confirmation, to hold fast to the confession of our hope, our faith in Christ. <coughs> For he who promised <coughs> is faithful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may this peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts, in your minds this day, in Christ's love. Amen. You sing the hymn, I am Jesus.
Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give to the family of Liz and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead and the assurance of a holy and certain hope, and then the general expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and to find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Liz and for all the blessings you bestowed upon her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life for things present or things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, in me will live even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. family has asked that I invite all of you to please stay immediately following the service this morning for a time of fellowship and the meal, in which we will have a meal prayer here so that everyone can begin following the family of the food morning this morning. Let's pray to God. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of food that you have provided and for all those whose labor brings your blessings to our tables. Pray that just through this meal we may be strengthened in your service and together may await with joy the feast you have prepared for all the faithful in your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection into everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love from the trial of faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Congregation, may you see it in the reception. Thank you.